I would love to start with the definition of what a cult is. What is a cult? Because when I talked about this research, when I was looking into what you were researching, people said, well, what is a cult? Because now if you do CrossFit, you're in the cult. Right. And I've been interviewed about CrossFit. So, And I'm, by the way, in a book called The Cult of Mac. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, sure. And when the guy asked to interview me and he said he was writing a book about computers, uh, and I said, what was the title? And he told me, I said, ha, I'll do the interview, but I have to disclose I've only used Apple since 1982. Right, I may be And biased. I have five Macs, four iPhones, three iPads right now. So Too um, bad you didn't keep your 1982 Macintosh. Yes, really. Jeez. And I have all of, I went, I've we're literally grown with the company. Anyway, so I think about um, an influence continuum from ethical, healthy to destructive. Mm-hmm. And so you can have cults that where people are total fanatics, but they're free to join, they're free to leave, they can read whatever they want to read, they can talk to whoever they want to talk to. It's not about fear and control and dependency. It's about being a part of this thing, whether you're into a... Um, a rock band that you just are fanatical about or a sports team or whatever, that's not a destructive cult. The groups that I'm worried about undermine people's human rights and enslave them psychologically. Right. So despite the fact that I might be dependent on my iPhone here, if I buy an Android, I don't have somebody showing up on my porch with a video camera. They're not trying to exactly. out me online as a... Uh, somebody who cheats on their taxes or their wife exactly they just don't, and they don't care what websites i visit exactly gotcha yeah so i have a whole laundry list of concerning behaviors mm-hmm. i call it the bite model which stands for behavior control is the b information control is the i thought control is the t and e is emotional control and so you can go through those four areas. They overlap in some cases, but you can get a pretty quick snapshot of where on the influence continuum from healthy and ethical to destructive a group will be. Most of the cults that I've worked with in the last 43 years after being rescued from the moon cult myself were religious cults, political cults, therapy cults, cults of personality with a person controlling another person or a small group of other people. That's what you're in right now if you're listening to this show. Now, um, a lot of people will say, use, they use that as a compliment, the cult of personality. Uh, of course, I'm not really controlling anything. Well, that but that's the whole point. Right. I mean, it's a normal human thing to look to models, people who are heroes, people that are looked up to as inspirational uh, that's healthy. Yeah, we should you, be so lucky to be considered that way, right? Um, well, I've watched a number of your shows. I think you're doing some really good work, oh, which good. is why I Thank agreed you. to do this interview. With oh, I'm you. glad. Yeah. I'm glad. Uh, look, some cults are really obvious. Uh, when we watched, what we talked before, Wild Wild Country, the documentary that that you said wasn't really that great. Um, that about Rajneesh right. that's been renamed as Osho told through the eyes of two former top officials who are both true believers and think that Rajneesh was an enlightened master i think he was a malignant narcissist destructive he cult way. leader to me, but it also yeah. seemed like they cut out a lot of things and they made him look like a guy who just didn't quite know what was going on. He was just busy with his spiritual stuff. By the time I have 19 Rolls Royces, you got to think something's wrong well, with the I way I think it was being. 92 oh, wow. in one location uh, in Oregon, Antelope, Oregon. But he was a, a sexual abuser and he was using hypnosis on people and they were blaming women who got pregnant and and forcing them to have abortion. Oh, wow. That was not in the documentary. Cremating, you know, remains of suspicious activities, wiretapping the entire compound. I can go on and on. Yeah. That wasn't in the documentary. No, they sort of like hinted at kind of a few, maybe the wiretapping thing, but they only said, oh, they turned out to be wiretapping me. They didn't say where everyone was. (laughs) Yeah, so I've counseled a number of people who were involved with that group, and it was so extreme like at in Pune, india his original ashram there was a sign leave your mind with your shoes outside like it was that overt oh wow 
And uh, so if you were a sannyasin and somebody came over to you and said, Jordan, I want to fuck you, and you were like repulsed, right? maybe it was an obese male, for example, yeah. and you didn't like it or didn't want to, the rap would be you are too attached to your ego, so you really need to submit to it. Ugh. That yeah. is so But that was the that was the culture of that cult, which right. was rape and breaking bones if you wanted to if somebody reminded you of their per sexual perpetrator and you wanted to wail on them with your fists, that would happen in workshops. That's so crazy. Yeah, it was really bad. That's really bad. Yeah, they make it look like kind of hippies that created a utopia and then it got a little bit they put a little pressure on the town, which wasn't right. And there was a little bit of craziness, but they left out a lot of the absolute ridiculousness that we're hearing about. Yeah, it was really... I, so I'm for spirituality. I'm for growth. I'm for meditation. I'm for people practicing love and non-egotism. Like, he was an egomaniac. Yeah, I, I think if I... He said he was greater than Jesus yeah, and Buddha. I Anyone who that. says that, winning, winning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the burden is on them to prove it, not on you to disprove it, which is I, what I say to all my clients. It's like, look, I, there are thousands of people walking around the earth claiming to be Jesus or better or Buddha or Muhammad or whatever. What are they, what are, how are they living? Mm -hmm. Right? And the real deal is always humility, compassion, kindness, charity, love. Right. Yeah. Right? 92 Rolls Royces. Was it, I mean, we're talking about people who have vows of poverty that were in, in the biblical time. If you if you're going to go down that road, and then someone to go, well, I have I need ninety two Rolls Royces. I mean, how many starving children does that feed? I think he was competing with Sai Baba, who was like another god figure from India that had millions of followers actually, and he was doing phony magic tricks to convince people he was manifesting. Rolexes with oh serial gosh. numbers out of the ether um, through his magical powers. Yeah, it's pretty sad. It, it is sad. And I, we have more casual exposure to cults than we probably think. I mean, look, obvious, the KKK, Scientology, Wild Wild Country. But then we have other things like yoga cults and some kinds of therapy and personal growth and even certain certain martial arts i think and i was at a hotel i can't remember where now this is a couple years ago i turned on the tv and on three channels was some guy dressed up in crazy garb sitting on eight thousand pillows and a, a, they're showing different live video streams from different Asian countries, I think. And they're all live streaming this guy who's just kind of moving slowly and mumbling and everyone's like crying. And, and I, I asked a friend, who is that? And she goes, I don't know. So it wasn't a world leader mm -hmm. that she would have known from her country. This wasn't somebody, she just goes, I don't know. My grandma watches that. And I went, oh, this is some kind of strange religious cult mm. that probably is predominantly in Southeast Asia and has people streaming in from the Philippines and Malaysia and Indonesia. Yeah, so we live in the age of influence. Mm -hmm. You know, we've thought we're in the age of information. We pass through the industrial age. We're in the age of influence. And with digital, you know, means, people are able to take advantage of other people on large scales. And the universals are power, money, and sex mm -hmm. is what they're after. Many of the cult leaders that I've dealt with um, are not just con artists who say, hey, I want to make money, but they actually believe their delusions. Maybe they were in a cult. Maybe they were in Rajneesh, mm -hmm. left, never got counseling, never understood mind control, and got a revelation one day that they're enlightened. So now they set up shop. And the, the problem is an uh, epidemic. There's different kinds of cults that you outline in the book. Cult mind control. That you have many mm -hmm. books, but the one I'm referring to is cult mind control. And one is commercial, the other religious. That seems to be the one that we most normally think of. Political, which you're doing some stuff maybe in the future that we can't talk about well, yet. Well, uh, Lyndon LaRouche is oh, one of the more sure. famous political cult leaders. But I, I have been interviewed about uh, Donald Trump, but uh, I can't talk about it at the moment. No problem. We I, we tend to stay away from politics on the show just because 
uh, you can you're either a snowflake or you're alt right. There's no in between apparently mm-hmm. now. So I'm just going to choose to opt out of that whole thing. Um, I'll get into politics when I when I buy an updated bulletproof vest and <laughs> hire someone to take abuse from me on social media mm-hmm. instead of answering it myself. Okay. But the self help cults are the ones that are so much more insidious, and I've seen. A lot of these lately, even I've gotten sort of duped into going to what you might call a leadership class, and I show up, and there ain't nothing about leadership going on here. It's some guy from Mexico who's a charismatic speaker ripping open everyone's childhood wounds. Half the room's crying. The other half of the room is feeling some sort of weird shame imposed on him because they showed up two minutes late. You can't go to the bathroom. And if anybody goes, hey, I'm a surgeon and I'm on call, well, you're being uncoachable, and they kick him out of the room, and they make a big embarrassing show out of it, and then nobody wants to stand up and be the next person to be shamed in front of 300 strangers. you're describing the bite model. Yeah. Controlling people's behavior, emotions, thoughts. I, I found this incredibly strange, and what was even stranger was I was looking around the room and I went, okay, I'm not the only person that thinks that this is crazy, right? And so I'm trying to make eye contact with people and talk with them. And, you know, I'm go- I go up and I stand next to the surgeon and he gets kicked out in a few hours. And so then I'm like, crap, who else is there? And then some other woman stands up and goes, hey, this is day two. I You said this ends at 10. We got out of here at three. I have kids. Then so I, I start sort of going up to her and I'm like, hey, so I'm not the only one that thinks this is weird, right? And then 20 minutes later, she's getting kicked out because she went to go to the bathroom without permission. Right. And I'm losing my friend here Mm -hmm. left and right right and i just thought am i crazy i'm the crazy one there's nobody else in here who seems to be willing to resist this and the truth is is that uh everybody is having doubts and Mm -hmm. having these thoughts but they're suppressing them and people unless you understand this frame of destructive mind control social psychology which i know you're a student of unless you understand that frame and i I suspect you were there not to work on your stuff but to just get the experience of what was being done to people yeah most people do not have the assertiveness to say excuse me why are you guilt tripping everybody? Why right. are you using social psychology principles to manipulate people to get people to be obedient to you? Yeah. And if you did, you will be kicked out. Right. Oh yeah. I I wanted to take notes and they said, "Hey, what are you writing down?" And I said, "This is fascinating." And they said, "You're not allowed to take notes. Anything important, you'll feel it." And I'm me as a Yeah, that's a warning. Yeah. Warning. Red flag, right? Mm-hmm. Because wait a minute, I'm an I'm an attorney. We write everything down. What do you mean if it's important? I'll say you're it. an attorney. That would. Oh make yeah, sense. no. They did <laughs> the dis, the disclaimer document that they gave us beforehand was 20 pages of you will name your firstborn child after this piano. I mean, there was no and there was an NDA there. also. There you was couldn't disclose. Luckily, what I did was I I struck everything out and then I I um, drew circles in the signature box and wrote I do not agree in very messy cursive See. and then handed it in. Everyone should be, go to law school um, and learn that. Stuff. But even then, I think it would be like, well, you you was you're in you're under contract because you stayed and all this stuff. I I was less worried about that, but it was absolutely ludicrous. And all of the employees, quote unquote, were there for free. They were all air quotes volunteers. The only person who was getting paid was I think the guy on stage and maybe his assistant. But something tells me that that person was working for. For the benefit of his all-knowing yeah, for guidance. The, for the people who were working for free, that was, they were getting more indoctrinated, right. as and well was, as in recruiting and indoctrinating others. It was incredible to watch, because it really was, and I, I, I feel bad using this word, but it was genius, in a way. Mm. It was evil genius. I mean, somebody would say, I'm late because of traffic, and they would get eviscerated in a way that actually made them cry. Mm -hmm. And I'd go, wow, that man is crying. So, and it wasn't just about them. I I thought, why do you spend so much time on this one person? It wasn't. That was for the benefit of the other 299 people in the room. Exactly. And everybody who showed a shred of assertiveness was was gone. And, And the example that really amazed me was at the end, they said, who wants to upgrade to the advanced class, which is next week and twice the price? And you have to take time off and all this stuff. Hmm. 
half the room, maybe three quarters of the room gets up and leaves. Mm -hmm. Then he's talking to this room where there's all these empty seats. And he I'm said- I'm surprised they'll let anyone leave. Well, they, they, they went to go- That's not genius they really go, knew what they were doing. They went to go sign up in another room. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, That's sorry. Different. They didn't leave the conference. Got they, it. They went to go give their money. Got it. So they're doing transactions. Then everybody else who was left- So they got the sheep going yes. and then they working on the goats. Exactly. Who were not re ready to understand that they have to commit to saving themselves and the planet. Right. If they don't do this right their life is meaningless it was basically <laughs> that hey you've already made it Sorry halfway yeah you know, but it was it was it's exactly so stereotypical what said. then everybody who was left he said oh i don't want to have to shout my voice hurts everyone move in to the middle and then how many are aren't signing up because you feel like you don't have the money or you can't get the time off work and then a certain number of people raised their hands and then they went to a different room where there were volunteers that were trained essentially to handle that objection oh we'll help you negotiate with your boss now you're getting negotiation lessons along with your spiritual bs then or they can sign up to be slave labor. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Oh, we'll hire you. Join the Sea done. Org for a billion years. Yes. And commit the rest of your life here and all your future lifetimes to Scientology slave labor. It, it, it was just an exercise in social pressure. And then, the, of course, the fewer and fewer groups he was able to sort of whittle off of us for various objections, there were maybe 20 of us out of hundreds. And he said, come up, everyone sit in the front row. And then he would get down and lean in and go, what are you, why are you stopping yourself from signing up? And, did, and sure enough, like half of us went and went, well, okay, because if, if you're going to be in my psychological space, I'll whip out my credit card. I mean, it was just like, an exercise in, in weak-minded BS. And let, let me predict that they also gave a rap about how there's no such thing as a victim and that uh, there's no such thing as an accident and that if bad things happened, you need to understand what your soul was trying to create this experience for yourself. Oh, that's so interesting. It wasn't that exact words, but I remember one of my friends, she was abused sexually by an uncle or something, and mm -hmm. he said, what part did you play in that? And I was horrified because she was, I think, four or six yeah. when this happened. Right. What part did you play in that? I mean, I wanted to punch somebody in the face. Never did I want to punch somebody in the face so hard in my whole the, life. The back, the back belief system is that you are God and you create your own reality. Mm -hmm. And if you think that, then you're like L. Ron Hubbard, <laughs> right. OT15, presumably, where you're controlling matter, energy, space, and time and you're beyond your body and everything is your whims reality is just a creation of your whims that's just not what reality is and but what it does for a lot of people uh being indoctrinated with this notion that there's no such thing as victimhood or there's no such thing as coincidence is is uh it 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 takes away their ability to say You've lied to me. <laughs> right. You you manipulated me. I did not want, no, this was going to happen. Lack of informed consent. Sure. To use lawyer language. Uh, well, that's exactly what it was. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to keep my experiences minimal here because I, I don't want to, uh, you're the expert. But what was strange for me was this was presented as a leadership course by another person who's a very big influencer now on Instagram. He's also got a podcast, but it wasn't nothing of the sort right. all the sort of learning games we played were all designed to make us feel stupid or weak or or to take our critical thinking skills and sort of flush them down the toilet and then say oh i'm not good at this i gotta look to this leader guy for support in this and it was all sort of like tricky logic games that you couldn't win so when I was first deprogrammed from the Moonies in 1976 and started studying this seriously, this meaning brainwashing mind control, mm -hmm. I read a 1961 book called Course of Persuasion by Edgar Schein, who was one of the people with Robert J. Lifton and Margaret Singer and Lewis West studying Chinese communist brainwashing of the 50s. Cool. This was in the MK Ultra era of like everybody wanting to know how do you control minds right mk ultra being the c the cia program correct the lsd hypnosis sh shock etc um anyway edgar shine used a model from kurt lewin uh a change model where he talked about unfreezing changing and refreezing oh this people. is interesting yes well it's what you were just describing i'm just giving you the paradigm the uh, academic paradigm. So you, to become a leader, 
first you have to take the person and destroy them, break mm -hmm. them completely down to nothing. That's the unfreezing. So you can overload the person with too much information, with emotionally upsetting material, do all kinds of group dynamics. Sleep deprivation is always a, t a typical thing. Is that why well, these things go till 2 a.m.? Oh, we just have so much exactly. content. Exactly. We're starting at 5, though. So, I mean, here. we need 7 to 9 hours of sleep to function right. optimally, critically, with our f frontal cortex where we have critical thinking. And if you sleep deprive people, they're not going to be clear minded, period. Anyway, so break people down, unfreeze them. Then change is the indoctrination of the new beliefs, the beliefs in the image of the leadership of the cult. Mm -hmm. And then you refreeze that new identity that's in the image of the cult. So that's the leadership training is that they don't want you to be you. They want you to be him you or are, her. Are in that cloned image, which in if, uh, are you familiar with the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association, the, the DSM-5? Kind of, I yeah. mean, I know what it is. Anyway, it's it's a book of listed listings of so-called mental illnesses or whatever, sure. mostly for insurance purposes. There's, I was just teaching this at a human trafficking conference in Texas, there is a category 300.15 that's a dissociative disorder and it explicitly talks about brainwashing, thought reform, coercive persuasion as in cults, sex. Uh, and what, so what we're talking about with mind control is a creation of a pseudo self that suppresses your real self. That when I was in the Moonies and I was a leader in the Moonies, I thought I was being my true self. But right. I was really being a small Sun Myung Moon, thinking like him, feeling like him, walking like him, talking like him. So it's kind of what would the what would cult leader do? How would they behave? How would because they react? Because they're the superior leader, right? They're right. geniuses and they have all this money and power, etc. Um but it, it's taking people away from their, their authentic selves. It's taking people and telling them not to trust their own judgment, their own thoughts, their own feelings. It's taking people away from their own free will. What is cult recruitment like now? Because you wrote, people don't join cults, they're recruited. What, there's a subtle distinction there. Why is that important? It's a hugely important. I guess I want to take a minute and just explain another academic idea sure. called the fundamental attribution error. Oh, yeah. I've, it's the single most it. important uh, principle of social psychology. Mm -hmm. It's a bias that people carry with them when they're trying to understand other people's behavior. They over-attribute personality variables, uh, individual variables, and they underestimate the social, environmental, or contextual pressures. Right. So why do people join cult? Well, you must have been looking for a father figure. You must have been weak. You must have been, you know, this, that, sure. as opposed to my girlfriend dumped me. True story. Three women were flirting with me at Queens College cafeteria, lying their faces off and inviting me to a dinner. Right. Right. That. So they didn't say, hi, we bow to an altar with Moon's picture on it. We think he's the greatest man in human history. Drop out of college, quit your job. You know, Moon will assign you to your perfect mate and you will not have sex for four years and he'll tell you when you can. Would I have joined? N uh, no. no. I, I would imagine uh, no, no guy right. in college would have so ever done that. So I don't know anyone who says, yeah, sign me up for exploitation, vulnerability, cutting me off from my own friends, family. Ta I was a creative writing major. Take all your original poetry and throw it in the garbage. Right. Yeah, I remember you threw away like 400 pieces of yeah, writing. My, so. all, all my body of work I threw out to demonstrate my, my love of God and my commitment to the group. Um, so people do not join destructive cults, but they get lured and they can, and, and so the Moonies have, I have a list on my website of 71 pages, single spaced of different names of front groups of the Moonies, depending on whatever interest you might find. And these days with Google, and search engine manipulation it's and, and burying bad information and such um, 
people really need to understand that if something's legitimate, it needs to stand up to scrutiny. And the last thing they want to do is rush into getting involved, going to a place, giving money without doing a really thorough independent investigation. And I like to think reading my books or looking at some of my free videos on freedomofmind.com will give people a consumer's mindset of yeah. what questions to ask. Well, uh, we'll go we'll go down that road in a bit because I'm okay. I'm curious and I want to put them in the worksheet. We do a worksheet for every episode. Okay. I want to throw this in the worksheet, but we see now cults are more active online, social media, YouTube. Um, Skype, even people are asking for money through PayPal. I mean, it's no longer show up at this basement YMCA or the VFW on hey. Friday. This is like you can be in a there's a there's someone online that is allegedly, I think I have to say, uh, doing cult stuff. Her name is Teal Swan. Have you ever heard of this person? I certainly have. Yeah. And she presumably trains people to help people with psychiatric Ill illnesses and right. suicidality. Very dangerous person. I actually was interviewed for a podcast about her. Oh, really? I think I that think that's where I found out about her as well. It was a podcast. I can't remember the name, but it was done by that journalist who was very good, uh, creative. Honestly, I can't remember either. Yeah. But what I do want to say, and people really need to listen to this um, when I was a recruiter for the Moonies in the 70s, I was dependent on asking the person questions to find out everything about their background, or I was dependent on talking to friends of theirs to gather data. Now you can go on the dark web mm -hmm. if somebody wants to get you and find out all kinds of things about your interests, your likes. Every time you like something on Facebook, that data is available for purchase, presumably, on the dark web. And if people want to manipulate you, there are formulas for understanding what's going to motivate you, what's going, what's going to be your weak spots, where are your buttons, what kind of attractions do you have? And it's a, it's such a different and 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 AI is being employed, and so a lot of the bad groups have the money to uh, use AI faculties. Absolutely, I'm, this, the data is not available not only available for purchase on the dark web. I think you can get personality profiles. I'm sure they're quote unquote anonymized, but you can easily if you know what you're doing find this and intelligence agencies use this to find exactly. out about people so if intelligence agencies are doing it then of course other people commercial groups can buy this and use it to target you what they do is they target these anonymized audiences with ads just like you would if you were selling a blanket or a mattress and then you just find vulnerable people online that want to take your stupid self-help cult seminar or something and then suddenly you've got a list of leads that would have taken you years to generate right. with with on campus recruiting or anything like that and uh, we'll link to that podcast with uh, that talks about teal swan in the show notes we'll find it it's not that hard my wife probably knows uh, what it is that was particularly troubling, and of course, now what's also troubling to me is the fact that right now, I would imagine almost the majority, mm. and I know this because I was one of those people, and um, I shouldn't even say was, am, one of those people who says, I'm not going to fall for this. I'm smart. Yeah. I listen to Jordan's show. I have good critical thinking skills. I'm a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer or a teacher. I am not going to fall for this BS. You come and tell me that this Korean guy is the Messiah and I'm going to go to Korea and work in this fake church. I mean, you, come on, Stephen. This is ridiculous. No, and that's You're what I said at age 19. Right. I, I bicycled cross country when I was 16. I've worked in my father's hardware store. I'm an extra honor student. I skipped eighth grade. No one's going to manipulate me and yeah. the, and the moonies use that line on me sure hey steve like you have a self-confidence problem you think somehow we're gonna make you believe something that you're not ready to believe no of course not ha yeah yeah ha. no we only want smart people in our cult <laughs> right ha <laughs> So I want to add a whole other dimension, which I don't know if you were prepared for, but I, it's really important. Two things. Surprise me. 
So there was a six-week trial that ended a few weeks ago in New York City of Keith Raniere, head of a cult called Nexium. Right, I he heard was that podcast too. Con convicted on all counts of conspiracy, Good. racketeering, sex trafficking, and voluntary servitude, on and on and on. Two billionaire heiress, the Bromfman's Allison Mack, uh, the, the actress was in that group, pled guilty. And Lauren Salzman, excuse me, Nancy Salzman, Lauren's mother, was trained in something called neurolinguistic programming. NLP, right. NLP, uh -huh. which was uh, created by John Grinder and Richard Bandler. I was actually trained in NLP in 1980 and 81 by both of them and the founders. They developed that based on the work of psychiatrist Milton Erickson, who was one of the MK Ultra experts that the CIA was going to to understand hypno covert hypnotic techniques. Tony Robbins, who does a lot of large group awareness trainings, was trained in NLP. He doesn't use that term. Apparently he had a, a financial arrangement with Grinder and Bandler. Uh, but that's what he's basically teaching. And then there are websites of uh, people who are going to teach you how to have covert hypno uh, use covert hypnosis for sex. Um, that's funny because I know exactly who you're talking about. I'm not going to mention their names because I don't even want people to find it. But spoiler alert, it's ridiculous. And for this the sex stuff, it would probably... It, Anybody who would fall for that particular type of hypnosis, I think, probably is not the type of person you would want in your life, but you'd also be surprised. So I wrote a blog about a, a divorce attorney in Ohio who is using covert hypnosis and sexually abusing his female clients yeah. and giving them amnesia so they couldn't even report the crime. Unbelievable. Until he, he did it to the wrong person. A uh, woman who wound up recording her molestation, bringing the tape, and the police did a sting, and he had re recordings of all of his molestations, and he's in jail. Um, so there are levels of expertise sure. regarding hypnosis, and for people to say, no, it's a matter of intelligence. Right, it's not. It's not a matter of intelligence, and people who understand the techniques and the methods are going to have a way to protect themselves, and people who think they're invulnerable are incredibly yeah. vulnerable. The, the, hypno the person I'm thinking of is a very strange person that has, honestly, is one of the weird you wouldn't even get around some of these people naturally you have to find them in their natural environment if you will mm. where they're on a stage and they already have status because if you meet them face to face in normal scenarios they're actually pretty low a lot of them are pretty low status not that charismatic or interesting right so that, that's probably what attracts them to this power struggle in the first place um, but it's it's very akin, and I don't want to go down this rabbit hole too far, it's very akin to the online influence space, where people are showing this highlight reel, oh, I made $100 million by the time I was 30, and da, da, da. and then you kind of go, who was this person four years ago? And it's the biggest dork you could possibly right. point out of a crowd, and you go, ah, you wanted status and power, you've invented a mythology about yourself, you're using advertising to spread that mythology about yourself on Instagram, you found a couple other guys and gals that are doing this you pair up and you you promote one another to give each other legitimacy and here we are suddenly with a stadium full of 2000 morons and perfectly smart people who got suckered into it by their f stupid friends and now you find yourself signing up for their drop shipping or their Amazon business programs so right. that you can be the next rich influential 20 year old with no job or whatever right and oh, it, it is um, sadly a, a growth business um, because there are so many people who are frustrated, feeling hopeless about the uh, uh, climate situation, about political institutions and leadership, about the economy. People want to have some hope, and so they're going to be more susceptible and look outside, especially to family or friends who've been suckered in themselves, and they'll and people will often because it's a family friend um, or a family member or a friend that says, "Please, Jordan, check this out because this has really been wonderful for me." And you care about them, and you want to you have a curiosity, but unless you have the skill set that you have or mm -hmm. I have. 
and you don't and you do understand the techniques that are being done systematically we're human beings especially yeah. if we're sleep deprived Exactly. And then suddenly you find yourself at a three-day firewalking baloney seminar, and you're looking around and going, why are all of these other smart business people clapping their hands and jumping up and down? What right. planet am I on? Right. And that's why I don't last. I went to a, something like that that I thought would be reputable. I don't want to mention the person's name because I'm sure they're litigious as heck. And I'm looking around going, I'm here with a bunch of smart entrepreneurs and we're all jumping up and jumping around. I'm not learning anything. I don't need dancing lessons. I came here to learn. <laughs> I don't want to clap and run around. I don't right. want to, you know, pretend I'm a fighter. I don't want to walk on hot coals at 2 a.m. This is right. ridiculous. Why am I in a stadium? Yeah. And I just couldn't wrap my head around it. But sure, my my uh, wife's cousin, she couldn't get enough of it, you know, and she's not a dumb person. Right. I, ironically, the, what you wrote about in the book was that the, the most the type of person that's not susceptible or less susceptible to being recruited by a cult is somebody who just escaped from one. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. Or they could right. be more vulnerable because people do cult hop. But um, the bottom line is education. If you really have a cl clarity in your mind and i think you're going to add this to your to your notes the influence continuum of yeah, we'll ethical in influence to unethical with particular themes and then the bite model with the list of the, the the characteristics of destructive mind controllers you can have a frame to go aha uh -huh. and ethical groups don't do these things and unethical ones do do these things right and why would you want to pay or put your body or spend your time in an uh, unethical unhealthy environment i don't think you would i found that a lot of people who join these also want to run their own it kind of goes in line with the whole influencer mentality oh i'm an influencer in the fitness space i'm going to follow an influencer in the finance space and he's following an influencer in the business space. i mean it's just it's sort of this weird um, matryoshka the the russian dolls you open up one and you find the person that they're following and then that person looks really successful and then there's another person that they're following and it's like all roads lead back to some of these kind of og guys who and some are dead now and then right. the, the the one after that just picks up the mantle and keeps going yeah and so again i come back to the idea of the dual identity and people are either really being authentically them versus being a clone of somebody else and the danger with modeling other people and thinking that you you know need to be think like them and feel like them and walk like them and talk like them is that it's that's not who you are mm -hmm. that's who they are or at least that's a persona that they're they're projecting as well you hinted at this before are cults more popular now or is it just that we're more aware of them because of the internet and the fact that they can target us literally on facebook and instagram I would say that destructive cults are everywhere and there are more of them because of all the breakdown of, of society's uh, institutions of faith that leaders know what they're doing and are leading the world in a right direction. Anyone who is anti-science and anti-climate change science is going to kill the rest of us if we allow them to dictate policy. Mm -hmm. It's it's to the point of absurdity that we're allowing lobbyists from the fossil fuel industry to control the rest of what's happening on the planet. And I'm very happy that younger people are getting activists about this and understanding science isn't perfect. You know, the thing, the beauty about the scientific method is you have a hypothesis that needs to be tested and is thrown aside when there's a better hypothesis. It's a search for truth and it's a community based search for truth because people are doing, trying to replicate mm -hmm. your studies, etc. Any, and, and, one of the things that I've researched in the last year as I've been preparing a new book is something very important that you will probably want to know more about and maybe do a podcast on. Mm -hmm. It's called Fourth Generation Warfare. Okay. Ever hear of it? No. It's a psyops uh, theory developed in the 80s by William Lind and other military strategists. But unlike trying to convince the other side that your side is the right one or their side is the wrong one. It's an assault on 
truth itself. It's a delegitimization of any leader or any institution. It's a deliberate disinformation campaign, overload campaign to make people numb, to make people powerless, to make people want to give up hmm. so that an authoritarian leader with a very confident voice, mm -hmm. trust me, I've got this. I can tell you what needs to happen that people will, because they're back in their childhood brain and their amygdala being stimulated by phobias, will follow a dictator and vote for dictatorships. It's interesting. I've got a, a friend who will simultaneously argue that there's a, for example, a certain leader is really, really got some good answers. He's cutting through all the BS. You know, I'm going to vote for him. He's going to win the election. And then we'll also say, and he's a genius manipulator and he's manipulating all these people. And I'm going, well, you are saying all of the things that he wants you to believe. And you're saying he's a genius manipulator, but you're saying that you like him for different reasons. Hmm. That is a little suspicious to me when someone says, if I, if I were to say, you know, this person, this is an abusive person. They are a master manipulator. And then someone goes, what are you doing tonight? And I go, oh, I'm hanging out with so-and-so, the same person. Well, right. wait a minute. Serial abuser of women. Right. What do you do? What do you mean you're hanging out? What, why would you do that? Oh, well, I, since I see them for what they are, he's not a, she's not a danger to me. He's not a danger to me. That is the height of self-delusion. It is. And to quote another academic concept, cognitive dissonance theory. Right. Uh, Leon Festinger came up with this studying a UFO cult that was prophesying a spaceship coming to a particular mountain on a particular night. And he and his students were pre predicting that when the spaceship didn't come, people would get disillusioned and leave. Only they believed more when the spaceship didn't come. And he was like trying to figure this out. And he, what he came up with is we have thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, but humans want to be congruent. Mm -hmm. If we do a, a, an extreme behavior, our thoughts and our feelings are going to shift to justify the behavior. Right. We so rationalize when the, our when behavior. When the leader said, because of your faith, the world was saved, right. they didn't need to evacuate us. Right. You're going to go, yeah, I yeah. sold my house, I quit my job, but I saved the planet. Right. It was all worth it. The narrative, right? But I want to just quote James Comey, if I may. You may. Um, it was a beautiful description of cognitive dissonance in action. He said, when you're sitting at a room and the guy at the head of the table is saying lie after lie after lie, and you're sitting there going, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie, but you don't call him out on it and you don't get up and walk out, but you continue to sit mm -hmm. there. He said it bends your soul. Oh, that's interesting. Because you're you're because of cognitive dissonance. Since I'm still sitting here, even though I know that he's lying, I'm sitting here because I must believe or like something else or find him credible in some other way. So here, because here I am. Why else would I sit here and listen to this BS? I'll be fired. Is is the obvious right. answer, and he was. But the but it's a very important window into why you want your friends not to hang out with the perpetrating right. person because by your behavior of hanging out, you have to adjust and rationalize and justify why it's okay to do that. Going back to the type of person that gets recruited into a cult, I found that, of course, look, somebody who's feeling wounded, they just got dumped, they've divorced, broken up with financial setbacks, not doing well at school or work, maybe some bad physical health. That's also, you know, that seems obvious. However, there's also doctors and lawyers. I mean, the the thing I was in, it wasn't just a bunch of dumbasses that upgraded to the advanced course. There were people there where I said, you have a $10 million a year business. The hell are you doing here? Mm -hmm. How do you not see that this is manipulation? Critical. One thing I've learned and really has been highlighted in the past like three years or so is that critical thinking skills and self-awareness, cognitive bias, knowledge of, of cognitive dissonance, that seems to be, it's like cancer. It affects everybody on every stratum of social yeah. and economic scale. It does not seem to matter if someone is an attorney or a doctor or they work at Chipotle and they're 16 years old. They seem 
equally or at least universally susceptible to this. And me walking out of that BS leadership course, the person next to me was, I think she was a she was from El Salvador and I want to say she, she was like a daycare person. Mm. She and I were like, I mean, she, her English was shaky and she was going, I don't like this. And I was thinking me neither. And we left a room full of surgeons and doctors and other people that should have, in my opinion at that time, freaking known better. Right. And didn't. Right. But the social proof aspect of very accomplished, wealthy, you know, highly educated people, that was one of the lures of my first workshop in the Moonies. Oh, he's from Yale. He's from Princeton. You know, he's a doctor. There must be something here. Because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't seeing it for the first day and a half of the Mooney workshop. Like, ooh, 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 this seems childish to me was what I was thinking. How did you get recruited? Talk about, let's talk about the moon cult that you were in. The, the reason you're an expert in this is because you've seen it firsthand. I'd love to hear a little bit about how they indoctrinated you in the beginning, because I want people to listen and go, wait a minute, this is happening to me right now, or this is what my brother is telling me is he's doing at college, or this is that weird thing my friend was into that didn't seem right to me. Yeah. So, I mean, the truth is the 70s, it was a different reality than it exists today because there was no information about the Moonies. Right. You couldn't Google it. There wasn't information about cults, per se, or how, how they work. Um, and, uh, however, uh, the same kinds of principles that the Chinese communists use in the 50s, and they're using today on over a million uh, citizens of China, particularly Muslims, Christians, and others, um, is social psychology mm -hmm. and, uh, and understanding that people are meaning-making organisms. Um, for me, I was so lied to about what the workshop was as we were driving into the gates of the multi-million dollar estate in, in uh, Tarrytown, and I was told, oh, this weekend we're going to have a joint workshop with the Unification Church. I said, what are you talking about? I'm Jewish. What church? What workshop? You didn't tell me anything about it. What did they work. tell you it was, these women who were invited you? We're to all going to go away and have a good time this oh, yeah. weekend. So you're thinking... We're I'm, hanging out. I'm going to hang out with these cute I thought women. I was going to get lucky, Yeah, honestly. Kirk, Kirk. Yeah. I that was what I thought. I would do. I would and, have jumped and, in And thought. I said, what are you talking about, a workshop in church? I'm Jewish. And they're like, oh, Steve. And this is a classic mind controller thing, mm -hmm. is they take the objection and they turn it around on you. Mm-hmm. What's the matter, Steve? Do you are you closed minded? Do you have like a problem with being with Christians? Oh right. And so no. like Yeah. I'm not no, racist. Yeah. But the frame of you lied to me. Like anyone who's lying to me that wants to be my friend, I don't want to be their friend. They're right. not trustworthy. Like I wanna hang out with people that I can count on. And and uh, so the lie got turned around emotionally, and I and I didn't have a cell phone. Way too early for cell phones. Sure, it sure. was snowing outside. I'm like, I want to go back now. Like, drive, turn the van around, and drive me home. That was another mistake. I should have taken my own car. Oh yeah, you were. So at I was mercy dependent. Of the logistics, yeah. Oh, it's not going back. It'll go in the morning. Just you know, chill out. We'll go in, we'll have a fireplace, we're gonna you know, get, get to know each other, and you, we'll, you can leave in the morning. And I bought into that instead of just walking out onto the street in the snow, in for, the cold, understandable. waiting to hitchhike, for, please get me, get me out. But I didn't understand the danger I was in, mm -hmm. again. And then in the morning came, I hadn't slept all night because of the noises in the room, sure. and then where's the van? I'm ready to leave. Oh, it left already. Sorry. So, all right. So you're you're at this retreat. You think, okay, I'm gonna leave in the morning, and then dot dot where's, dot. You're in the where's movies, the Tony. where's the van? So it's really a lot of manipulation and handling, and me not being assertive to demand I'm exiting. Sure. Wow. And different people coming over to talk with me. Well, let's go have breakfast. We're going to go outside and have some sports for a few minutes. So, and 
me not wanting to be a pain in the ass again i just i was curious sure. why everybody was so happy and so into this and so excited uh, the, and the and the pitch also was that this was a student movement that was going to make a difference and make the world a better place right and culturally, I was raised as a Jew in a, in a concept called tikkun olam, that you want to repair the world, you want to contribute and make the world a little bit better than the world that you came into. So that was a vulnerability of mine as well. The deprogramming that you do when you help other people get out of cults, is this something that you went through yourself at some point so deprogramming the term was coined by ted patrick mm -hmm. uh in the early 70s it was involving almost by force holding someone against their will and kind of a very confrontative like jordan wake up you right. know moon is not the messiah dude like let me tell you why he's not the messiah so it's like it was, a hardcore intervention it was very very hardcore that's how it started with me that was not gonna work uh my father cried at one point saying you know steve you dropped out of school you quit your job you donated your bank account you got involved with a controversial group your mom and i are worried about you Oh, don't worry about I'm not brainwashed. I've never been happier. He's like, just prove it. Just like sit and talk with these people and listen and, and question. And if you want to go back, I'll drive you there. But at least we'll be able to sleep at night knowing we did the responsible thing. Mm -hmm. And my father was not a crier and, and tears were coming down. And he touched the real me. Mm -hmm. I can tell that he was really upset for me, even though I was good. Like I right. knew that I was good. I was following God's will. So it became voluntary. And the people who were involved with my deprogramming, the woman I had recruited into the Moonies and had gotten out. So I had a personal emotional connection uh. with her where I trusted her and liked her. Um, but to get to your, your, your question, deprogramming has evolved over the decades tremendously. It First of all, when I got out and did deprogramming, judges were granting ex parte conservatorships to pet families for a week. To what does get. that mean? It means uh, parents would go before a judge and say, Your Honor, my 19-year-old my son is a victim of artful and designing people. He's in a cult, and we believe he doesn't understand the nature of the group or the psychological forces on him. We would like permission to have custody for one week to expose him to information about brainwashing and mind control, about theology and former members. Um, and the judge would say, bring him back in a week. But they would grant a piece of paper that would empower the parents to hire some sheriffs, go to the cult center, and take escort them to the deprogramming. Holy cow. So I did, that I, I did cases like that, and they worked. Wow. But at the point that it was illegal, I said, I'm not doing this anymore. Right. But I still cared and I wanted to help people get out. And as I was learning NLP and learning how to model cult mind control and what worked in my deprogramming, what were the thought processes and emotional experiences that I had to go through to wake up, I developed an, a voluntary intervention model that I called exit counseling. And then when the internet happened, that and my book came out combating cult mind control in 1988 a lot of the cult leaders read my book sure and so they weren't allowing people to go home by themselves they would and and there was a much higher level of monitoring so what i've evolved it to is something called the strategic interactive approach which uh to summarize it's an ethical counter influence campaign but instead of trying to indoctrinate someone to be dependent and obedient, it's geared toward empowering them to think for themselves and feel for themselves and make their own independent evaluation. Because you're thinking the authentic self that's still there underneath the cult self does want to get out. They do want to be, they can still make decisions. They just have, they've been programmed to shut that down. Yeah. And being in a mind control cult is uh, horrible. 
on a very fundamental human way where you can't say, you know what, I'm tired, I need to sleep a few extra hours. Or, you know what, I want a day off. Like, I didn't have a day off. What was your wake-up call? You had a pretty severe... I slept three to four hours a night. I worked 18 to 21 hours a day, seven days a week. I was a labor trafficking victim, basically, Mm -hmm. because the definition of trafficking is, is fraud, force, or coercion. So that can involve labor or sex, fraud, fo- force, and coercion. But um, I was kept busy all the time. And, and part of my manipulation was, Steve, you're a leader. Like, God mm-hmm. wants you to run a country one day. So How every, flattering. And, and yeah. they even said you should think what country you would like to run to me right. when I was 21 years old. Which fantasize about what you're going to do later when all of those horrible crap stops and you're in charge of Germany. But but uh, I thought Australia would be a good country yeah. to run because I'd have my own continent. I honestly had that thought. I'm embarrassed to say. Australia is uh, good. I would, I would But I had no ambitions Australia. to be a politician or to have power. I was writing poetry. I want to be an English professor right. before that. In any case... Um, uh, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Well, Talking about your wake-up call, because you had a pretty severe incident. Oh, right. You're so sleeping three the, or four hours a the, night. So the, yeah, so, but the, the strategic interactive approach says, essentially, that asking good questions in a respectful, thoughtful, caring way, like, uh-huh. Jordan, I really like you. I really want to understand how you were before. And how you are now, it seems different. Like, tell me about your evolution. Tell me what it was that they were teaching you that seemed to make a difference. But it makes you go inside and remember. Like, if Uh, someone had got me thinking about the lie, like when you first met the women at, at the cafeteria of Queens College... What did they say? Did they say we are members of the Unification Church and we believe Samuel Moon is the Messiah? I would have said no. In fact, I asked them if they were part of a religious group and they looked me straight in the eye and said no. Right. So you start going back in time in your head and going, oh, I was lied to here, 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 and here, and now I'm doing this. And now I'm lying to people and now I'm lying to get to people. people in. Right. And I believe in God and the, and I teach, because they have a book called The Divine Principle, I, we teach that God is a God of truth. So I'm teaching that God is a God of truth. We're agents of God, but we're lying because everyone's in Satan's world. That's right. the That's the rap that's the rhetoric yeah but it does not compute like how are we going to build a perfect world based on lies and mind control like even if we took over the world how would we how would that work Uh uh-huh and it wasn't until i was out of the cult for four years where for example i remembered an experience with moon directly where he said you know when we take power in america we'll amend the constitution and make it a capital offense for people to have sex outside of the unification church marriages Wow! and i went yes father and i was educated about the holocaust right I, I was educated. I read books like Animal Farm in 1984 before I was in the cult. But you suppress all of these things that do not compute to the narrative of what the ideal you want to believe the group is doing. So my whole approach is not based on force, coercion, it's on love, questioning, curiosity, and that people should make their own decisions. If you if you are happy and want to stay in the group and recruit and work for nothing, that's your choice. But do it with your eyes open, understanding what coercion is, understanding what mind control is, etc. And it works because people don't want to be slaves. That That is so interesting. There's Different elements of mind control. I want to, before we get into those, though, you list multi-level marketing as a commercial cult. And I'm wondering, does that water down the definition at all? Because these are so, they're so popular now. And I say all the time, don't sign up for this. This is MLM. That's an MLM. And people who, first of all, a lot of people don't even seem to know what that is. They don't seem to understand it. Other people go, well, this is different. And they've... These are the same people that have been ripped off by three other stupid-ass product 
things in the past. Right, and Betsy DeVos made her money, family money in Amway, right. and she's in charge of education and wants to dismantle education in the United States right. and, and put in religious education instead. So um, I want to recommend Robert Fitzpatrick Sites Pyramid Scheme Alert dot org. Love, Robert was on my show. Ugh, oh, you did eight years ago. Okay, uh, no, it was so time long to ago. have him on again yeah, because agreed. they are trying to pass a law making pyramid schemes legal in the United States under the current administration. So the bottom line is it's the same bite model stuff: the deceptive recruitment, you know, and and. Uh, believe a hundred percent and listen to the tapes go to the meetings don't say anything negative mm -hmm. you can only say something negative to your upline which is totally information control and and getting people to do incremental uh commitments buying products and such and again cognitive dissonance theory kicks in sure. the the lewin model the unfreezing changing refreezing and people are made to feel like there's something wrong with them that they're not making all the money cuz say they have the models they have the yachts and the yeah. rolex watches and you're, you're losing money so you need to go inside and figure out why you're not what's sabotaging you inside of your mind you know, or 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 in the religious multi-level marketing groups, because Utah is the biggest state in the United States for multi-level marketing. You have to pray more. You have to confess mm -hmm. more. I met a Mormon guy the other day from Utah, and he, I was ask, I asked him about this. I said, you know, what's up with MLMs and Mormons? No offense. And he goes, no, none taken. These are a plague. The, those of us that get it, we can't even talk our friends out of it because. It's and he's he told me he this is kind of controversial but what he said is I think our I th he's Mormon and he's conservative so take it in the context he said I think our women are bored and they need something to do and th but there's something to that if you're mm -hmm. bored in your home and you feel purposeless your kids are a little older and they're not calling for you every five minutes sure you want to start contributing to the family and to the house so yeah you start selling something that looks as innocuous women as, empowerment as, model as, right and there's nothing wrong with that of course but they start selling shakes and they're recruiting their social circle and mormons are really generally really lovely people that have really wide social circles that are really yeah. tight so it's a really easy way for them to go to their church and recruit a bunch of other people that are going to trust and like them because yeah. they grew up together or whatever and it becomes more dangerous because you see people starting to pollute their own church their own family groups with this in irreparable ways and i, I was watching a documentary on mlm and i think it was on i think it was called uh, betting, betting on, on zero. zero and you see I wrote this a blog about it i almost i'm just start, i'm choking up at this point because this hispanic woman said this she was supposed to be my friend right this woman was ruining her relationships with friends to make, I don't know, 13,000 bucks. I mean, it's just right. not worth the money. Right. And exactly. she didn't get to keep that 13,000 and went straight to her upline. I didn't know you couldn't say negative things to the people you recruit. You're only allowed to tell the people that have recruited you. Yeah, so they only, can handle... and yes, because, and, and every mind control cult does not want you saying anything negative against the leader, the doctrine, or the wow. policy. So that's part of the information control right yeah healthy organizations you want to hear criticisms you want to hear feedback of if the leader you know said something wrong bad decision or something you want to call the leader out and say hey we trusted you you did this wrong right. and you want a leader that goes you're right i screwed up we can do i better. apologize right. and you want that kind of responsive uh, dynamic organization. I did want to mention Je uh, Warren Jeffs, who in jail for the Fundamentalist Latter-day Saints. He had 74 wives and God knows how many children. He was uh, marrying you know, 10 year old girls. Oh, so. And this crazy. was a, this is, they, they felt the mainline Mormon church w w was taken over by Satan because they were abandoning polygamy. Right. Right, because they wanted statehood. So he's that just was a pedophile, yeah. Right. But then when I started counseling people out of that group, I started hearing from former Mormons, and I was actually invited to a convention of ex-mainstream Mormons who wanted to educate me about their church, and I proceeded to teach about the bite model. It's actually on on their website on YouTube, I should say my talk and 250 ex-mormons were agreeing with mm -hmm. the mormons and then there was a fellow who spoke right after me who had been a professor at one of their institutes their training institutes at byu and other places 
And the title of his talk was Lying for the Lord, Deception as a Management Tool of the LDS Church. Oh my gosh. And he proceeded to talk about the lies of Joseph Smith all the way to a secret recording he made with his boss where he's saying to his boss, so you're telling me I have to lie to my students in order to keep my job? And the boss said, yes, that's correct. If you, if you teach them the, the history of the Mormon church, the accurate history, then you're fired. And he said, I quit. Wow. And when I, when I heard that, I was like, that really resonates with the Moonies sure. and Hubbard and a lot of other cults. Wow. How do cult leaders even come up with all this mind control stuff, right? Because look, when somebody says, this old Korean guy is not the Messiah, uh, and if somebody says that to you, you're supposed to sing holy songs and la la your way through the negative talk. I mean, how that seems pretty basic, but some of this is really advanced manipulation over time. One thing that I went through with that stupid self help seminar that I went to is there was a guy who was being he was probably a New Yorker or something. He was very vocal and very critical, and then they they. He was just on the borderline of getting kind of kicked out, but I think they wanted to rope him in because he had some people that kind of agreed with him here and there. Mm -hmm. This is like day two. And so they said, oh, well, you know what? Let's do something different. I was going to do this this drill, but now I want to do another drill. And it was like everyone pick somebody. Mm. Everyone stand on the side and pick one person that you think is unattractive and negative. And everyone just walked over to this guy and he's mm. got everyone staring at him that we were supposed to stare at that person. Mm. So we're staring at that person. And this guy's like, well, what did I do? And then he's like, see, this is how you're perceived by others. That guy didn't say much for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, I bet. It was it was very and it was obvious that that drill wasn't just the next thing we were going to do. It was a drill that he kept a leader kept in his back pocket to go when somebody's acting up and kicking them out would make me look bad because they've gotten a few people to mm. nod in agreement. Mm -hmm. We have to d absolutely cut him off at the knees. And this is a drill that will do that. And you see self-help people using these bullying drills where. Uh, you know, and I'm going to throw Tony Robbins under the bus on this one. There was a time where he, he said some, some woman stood up and said something about the uh, the women's movement, the Me Too movement. And he said, oh, this is a victimhood thing. And he took a lot of shit for that. OK, but what he did as in the moment, should. as he should. But what he did in the moment was he said, put your hand out against mine. And then he started pushing her forward. And he's like six foot seven and she's like five foot five. And then he said, why are you pushing against me? See, you're wired to resist. And it's like. You could have illustrated that point right up next to her. You could have just said so. What you wanted to do was show 11,000 people and make her know that 11,000 people or 8,000 people were watching her get pushed by you physically and make her wrong right. in a very dramatic way. This is right. a drill that I've seen him do before with other people yeah. when they resist him. And I've seen other people do the exact same thing in these self-help groups. These are drills that are not there to help everyone learn something. They are drills that are designed to manipulate right. somebody. No, I couldn't agree more. I'm not a fan of Tony Robbins. There's, I, we could talk for weeks, yes. I have a feeling. Um, but there's two th comments I want to, different directions. Mm -hmm. I'll do them quickly. You asked me, how do people learn about this stuff? Or yeah, how do the they cult leaders even it? come up with it? Because there's no manual for this besides maybe a book. So, now. yeah, unfortunately, that was uh, a, a negative side effect of my book coming out is that it was teaching people how cults operate and, and could be used for nefarious purposes. But I, what I want to say first is... That what I learned when I got out of the group and really dove deep into the whole world of mind control, I mentioned MK Ultra. Um, post World War II, Korean War, Chinese Communist brainwashing, South Korea was very unstable. North Korea is a version of what it is today a totalitarian dictatorship, total mind control. And some, some people in military intelligence in the United States decided, well, the North Koreans are brainwashing. We need to help create a program in South Korea to stabilize the regime. Mm. They taught the South Korean uh, president, you need to set up a Korean CIA. We'll help you. We'll teach you. 
and they set up a re-education program for dissidents in South Korea, and they decided to use a front person so it was not looking like a, a government operation, and it was the Moonies that was chosen to do that. Wow, so this started as a counterbalance to Kim Il-sung's North Korea. Exactly, Korean. and the Moonies had... Uh, Nobody knows why or how the patents for manufacturing M16 rifles and other American military hardware. Why? Because America was leaving Vietnam. It was still the height of the Cold War. We have to stop the commies. And then somebody said, let's bring the Moonies to the United States and set up counter communist programs on college campuses. And that's oh, where wow. I got recruited. So this started off as a Cold War thing and just kind of went... Correct. And then I was sent with Moonies to fast for Nixon during Watergate because God loves Nixon wow. and God wants Nixon. But the, the U.S. government has never acknowledged the existence of these things. They don't want to talk about it, even during Jonestown where Congressman Ryan was assassinated. Uh, there was an entire Koreagate investigation, George Sr. Bush was the head of the CIA during the operations that I was just describing. So I found this all out after I got out of the group, right? Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, groups are being set up to do political purposes, not only by the US, Russia, China, setting up front groups, because then they can gather intel, they can recruit and indoctrinate people. So there's a whole political side to this. But then the other answer is that people who are in a mind control, let's say someone's raised in a destructive uh, family system, mm -hmm. father's authoritarian, beats the crap out of the kids, wants obedience, um, they're learning mind control techniques in that yeah. context experientially right? Yeah. Or take someone who's in Osho in Rajneesh or someone who's in Scientology and leaves and goes, you know, I can take these techniques and use them. For example, Werner Erhardt, mm -hmm. Jack Rosenberg, who is a Scientologist who sets up EST right. and Landmark Forum. What I took was which, the offshoot of that. Which morphs into many splinter groups because yeah. people were trained in the forum and then they go, well, why don't I do my own version of this? I'd like to make the money sure. yeah. instead. So there's this victim-victimizer effect where there's more and more of these smaller groups. Yeah. The, other, the other comment I wanted to say about staring is... Um, so in Scientology, do you know about the TRs, uh, the TRs? training routines? No. Uh, here's here's what I would like to do. Okay. Because we're we only have like a few minutes left. I would love to do another part. We can do it remotely, maybe in the next couple of weeks. Because I've got pages of what do I do if my family member is going to be in a cult? How do I recognize these techniques? All things from your book. Um, I'm hoping you're I'm available. I'm committing to, to another one in a couple of weeks, but we could do one in October. Or yeah, I, I'll have so. to hold this till then because I want to release them back to back. So it's the same okay. conversation. Okay. Because, yeah, there's going to be so much there. Uh, okay. But I don't know what the TRs are. I, I, I'm fascinated but by the But very briefly, yeah. they are a set of graduated exercises. They tell someone, we're going to teach you how to communicate, Jordan. Step one is putting your hands flat on your, your, your knees, closing your eyes and breathing and just being there. And the Scientologist will tell you when you've reached that state of being there which when I demonstrate it to my colleagues at the International Society of Hypnosis, they go, oh, that's hypnosis. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's step one. When you pass that, then you sit knee to knee to a Scientologist and you stare in their eyes and you don't move. To what end? Hypno hypnosis? For minutes, minutes, many minutes, sometimes hours. You can't not go into a trance state huh. if you freeze. The eyes are meant to, to scan. If you, if you focus on a flame, if you focus on a mantra, you're directing your mind. You're not thinking analytically. You go into a zone where you're more suggestible mm -hmm. to indoctrination. Step three, and then I'll stop. And Scientology's TRs 
is you stare and the Scientologist tries to get you to respond. Tells you a bad joke. See, flunk. You just moved your head. Why? Flunk. Because they're training obedience. Oh, God. I would dependency. Be awful yeah. And people spend days till they can pass. Yeah. Why? Because in our culture, we're trained. We want to be the best. We want to succeed. We want to graduate the course. We don't want to be a failure. Yeah. But people are groomed and indoctrinated into hypnotic states where they're then indoctrinated with Hubbard's weird crap. Yeah. I, there's so many interesting elements of this <laughs> where you would even mentioned that the real self when you're in a cult, your authentic self that's buried underneath this cult identity will start having medical issues, nightmares to get kind of your, your emotional brain is kicking the rest of you and right. saying, wake up, man, I'm in here. Why are you ignoring me? You've suppressed all your natural exactly. resources and instincts here. It's like the, your emotional brain is desperately trying to communicate with the outside world. And in part two, what I want to get into is what to do if you're being recruited by a cult, how to see if your friends and family are being affected by this. Uh, I've got an, another cult story that I didn't even know was a cult story until I read your book from a mm. kid in college who ended up getting kidnapped by his own parents to leave hmm. this cult. He ended up work. It was weird. He ended up working at like a store. It's a whole, it, it just, that's why it didn't seem like a cult until I read the book. So stay tuned for part two. In the meantime, Stephen Hassan, thank you so much for being here. Thanks with us. for flying to Boston. Nice to meet you.